Hello, Mr. Hill here. Uh, today, we're just going to have a look at GCSE product design theory. Um, uh, this may be part of the uh, exam, and this is kind of topic two, electronic systems. Okay, so learning that we'll have a look through in this section is a structure of a system, electronic system components, microcontrollers, and outputs. All right, so let's get um, started. So let's have a look at our next uh, slide. So structure of a system. We've got, I've identified three structures here, but there is one more which we'll go through um, once we've just covered these first three. So first you've got your input, okay? This is a device uh, uses a real world signal such as a voltage or current or movement. A good example is think of the motion detectors linked to your alarm system in your house, okay? That's your input. In this case, your input would be your movement, okay? It's a real world action. Once we've um, walked past the motion sensor, we then go into process. Now this is the brain of the system, okay? It alters the electronic signal to create functions. Now in this case, we've walked past the uh, motion sensor and now the motion sensor will be identifying what to do with that information. So it will process that information. We then move to output. Now output devices take an electric or electronic signal i.e. the process, and they turn it into a real-world signal. So we start at a real-world signal, we then put it into a process, and we end up with a real-world signal. Okay, carrying on with that example, we walk past the motion sensor linked to our alarm. The process section alters that um, movement and creates a function, and the output in this case would be a, an alarm a sound, okay? So between process and output, you can have something called a driver. Now the driver thinks interrupts that signal, okay? It interrupts the process and the output or offers different alternatives. Some of those alternatives might be the type of sound. The um, So when we walk past the motion sensor and we're a man, um, it might sound different to if a female walked past the motion sensor. Okay, so the process is the same, but the driver just interrupts and changes that process slightly. Okay, it alters the brain of the system. All right, so let's cover that. So input, process, output. However, sometimes your driver can go between your app, your process and your output. So let's carry on um, and look as an, as an at an example of that, in this case, it switches. Apologies, you can't quite see the title of this slide. It's because my face is over it. Um, so switches allow a current to flow through them when contact, um, excuse me, when contacts uh, inside are joined together. Okay, in this case, we've got a light switch. This is the uh, electrical component and this is the switch, okay? And they're together and that's when you get on and off, okay? So they're touching, the, con the current flows through the contacts that are inside. For example now, a push to make switch, okay? I've turned the switch on, I've pushed to make the switch, allows current to flow through, or a signal to be passed on for processing. When pressed, okay, so I've pressed that switch, therefore it makes the circuit. Okay, this is really important language that you need to um, cover during your answer in the exam. A push to break switch does the reverse. It breaks the circuit. Now my switch is off. A push to make, a push to break. Okay, and you can see just down um, on the slide there, you've got an example of the type of switch that I've been kind of imitating with my hands. And right over that side of the slide, you've got the um, drawings, the examples of that push to make and push to break switch on. Now, those are the most common ones that are going to come up in the exam. However, I have put some different types of switches sort of there on the um, slide, okay? Uh, different types of switches. A few people have asked what the toggle switch is. 
if you um, go to school in a fairly old school or college, they might have some unused switches on the wall, which are often brass, and they've got a little toggle on and they flip up and down um, and you kind of move them up and down. In fact, I'll try and put a, uh, a link to some of these in the uh, description below so you can have a look. All right, so we've got the input, output, uh, input process output. Then we've had a quick look at switches and that push to make and the push to break um, switch. So on and off. And we know from what we've just said and gone through that switches allow the current to flow through them when contacts inside are joined together. Really good answer in red there if uh, you get a question asking you to describe how a switch works. Okay, let's move on to the next slide, which is sensors. Apologies again, you can't quite see it. So sensors can be used to detect changes in light level, temperature, and pressure. They are used in a wide range of products from night lights to security alarms, alarms and central heating systems. Now, a common question that comes up in the exam is to describe how a light dependent resistor works. Okay, and I've just briefly described this for you there. So a light dependent resistor or an LDR is a special type of resistor whose resistance changes with the light level. As the light gets brighter, its resistance decreases. It can therefore be used as a simple light sensor. Okay, so a good example of that is um, a out outdoor light, an exterior light that you might have in the garden, that when it goes dark uh, and the weather changes into nighttime, the light comes on and it gets brighter. Really common one, street lights, okay? they work with a light dependent resistor, all right? That's a good example. So we know that the light dependent resistor gets brighter and its resistance decreases, okay? Now on the, so that's kind of light uh, sensor. On the other side, you've got a heat sensor or a temperature sensor, and we call that a thermistor, okay? And it works in a similar way, except it responds to changing temperatures, uh, temperature levels. So just like the light dependent resistor changes light uh, responds to light levels, this one, uh, the thermistor responds to different temperature levels. Now, a good example of this is in a heating system. Okay, so in your home, as the, the room or your home gets hotter, the uh, thermistor drops and the temperature drops um, in the heating system so the house doesn't get too hot. Okay, so it can be used to trigger temperature in a room uh, and trigger the turning off of a heater if it's too cold. Okay, a good one of that uh, is your central heating system. Great example, nice and simple. Um, and it's something we live with every day, just like our uh, night light outside or our lights in our garden. Okay, so that covers sensors for you. Okay, uh, one that will come up very, very common is microcontrollers. Okay, <clears throat> microcontrollers provide functionality and they give intelligence um, intelligence to, uh, uh, to models or systems, okay, from mobile phones to washing machines. Many everyday objects are controlled by these devices, all right? Now, the purpose of microcontrollers um, is uh, it takes the process devices uh, takes the signal from the input stage of a system and act on it. Okay, so it takes that motion of walking past our motion sensor in our house and it acts on that by changing it in some way. For example, introducing a time delay, counting the number of times something happens or making decisions. Okay, so think of it again, a little bit like the driver, it's a disruptor. It's the kind of um, second brains of the electronic system in our input process and output. So a microcontroller um, is programmed in a number of ways. Now you might remember that when we were uh, looking at our design strategies earlier on in a previous video, we were talking about um, different ways of uh, designing products or developing products. And we mentioned some of these um, processes in our systems thinking um, design strategy. So microcontrollers are programmed using things like text-based programming languages, such as BASIC, 
um, C++ or Python. Those are computer-based um, languages. We can use block-based programming uh, editors, which is kind of like the pink uh, circle with the arrow, as an example, or flowchart software. And you'll notice that these are all very um, top-down uh, methods of designing. And that, that's because it suits the type of um, output we want in our uh, product, okay? So we perhaps wouldn't use a focus group or use a centered design. We would use um, a systems thinking design because after all, we're designing a system, okay? So let's just recap that. Microcontrollers provide functionality and give intelligence to our systems. So a good example is mobile phones, washing machines, and everyday products uh, are controlled by these devices. They take the signal from the input stage of a system and act on it by changing it in some way. For example, introducing a time delay, counting the number of times something happens or making decision or, or making decisions. Okay. So let's finally look at outputs. Okay. Output devices allow a system to present information back into the real world. Okay. They come out of that process and they, they um, manifest in a real world signal. Examples can be seen absolutely everywhere from car indicators to door buzzers and information displays. So I've given you two here. I've given you light and sound as the most simple ones. They're the most common ones that you're going to be asked about. So we all know that light can be created using lamps. Okay. When current flows through the filament of the light bulb, it heats up and light is produced. Fili uh, filament lamps are increasingly being replaced now with energy saving alternatives such as light emitting diodes. We commonly know them as LEDs. You'll have them all around your house. They last much longer, much more energy efficient. So that's our lights uh, output. Now we'll have a look at sound. Uh, a good one, buzzers. Okay. Buzzers have an oscillator inside a plastic case. When current flows through them, they produce a buzzing sound. Examples of their use include uh, doorbells and alarms, a little bit like the motion sensor we were talking about earlier. So we've got two examples there. The purpose of these output devices is they take the signal from the process device of a system and they turn it back into a physical or real world signal. Now, I keep repeating that real world signal because it's super important. And it's a piece of terminology that is going to help you answer those questions in the exam correctly. OK, so let's recap. If we go back to our first um, slide, we can see now that our input, we've gone through some examples of those inputs, our process, the brain of the system. We've also gone through that and our microcontroller could sit in there as a second brain to interrupt the system. And we've gone through our output for instance, light and sound. So what I think would be a great idea, if you want to identify some uh, products or items around your bedroom or your home and describe that input process output, that will really help to embed that knowledge um, in your brain and to make it kind of second nature when you're coming to describe how that uh, particular product or mechanism or machine works. All right. So really quick one, lots of information there. Apologies if it was too fast, but um, this is why I like to do these videos because you can go back, pause, have a think, and then continue the video or perhaps make notes through it. Um, our next video will be on the work of designers and design companies. Okay. These um, is a really super interesting one. Hope you really enjoy it. If you did enjoy this one, please like, subscribe. You're welcome to leave a comment below on anything you think that uh, you want me to cover, and I can do that for you in an upcoming video. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my Sunday and try and relax before another week. Thanks very much. Good to speak to you. Uh, take care. Bye-bye.